All right, hello, Internet. My name is Andrew, and tonight I am joined by Miss Jess McLeod. So I guess, number one, like, what is Royal Family Kids Camp? Um, the camp is a free one-week sleepaway summer camp for kids uh, that have been abused, abandoned, and neglected from our local foster care system. And it's 100% donation-run and volunteer-based. Do you see that? Do you see that as a growing need in Cowlitz County and Wakayakum? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, definitely, especially when you compare the numbers of the kids that we have in foster care compared to Thurston County, where our capital is. We have about the same number of kids, but our population is just a fraction of their population. So proportionately, we have a lot more kids in care. And I think there's a couple different reasons. Some of it is drug use as well. But um, the kids that in care in our area, the majority of them are in there because of neglect. Um, but there are other cases as well that lead them to be removed from their homes. Yeah, we have seen, if you talk to teachers here in, in the county, we are seeing more and more children who are in the foster care system and who have behavioral issues due to neglect and it's it's heartbreaking because there's a lot of things happening to them and they're acting out because things things are happening to them not because of their choice but just because of the situations that they are in and just finding um, that neglect is even though they might be placed in a, a well-meaning home that neglect travels with them and so this this camp this this program like how does it help a, a student who is who's been neglected, I guess. Um, so regardless of what their case is, for the reason that they came into care, uh, a lot of times that they self-identify as a troubled kid or someone who isn't worthy or uh, isn't worthy of a loving home. Their parents might have abandoned them. Some babies are abandoned after giving birth at the hospital even. And some are older and are aware of when their parents give them up. Uh, and then others are just know that their parents couldn't get their own situation in order to be able to care for them in a safe manner and so for a kid to we know that even kids that are a product of divorce feel internalize it and feel like it's their fault or they did something bad so at camp we let them know first of all we're royal family kids camp because we get to introduce them to their heavenly father who's a king which means they are princes and princesses and we try our best that whole week to treat them that way because we know that they don't normally get that opportunity to be treated that way um, and then we also hope that they then see their identities in Christ and the plans and the good things that he has for them regardless of the story that they uh, were born into or the circumstances that they came from that they do have this hope that they can live out they don't have to let their past or their biological families determine the paths that they go down so if I'm hearing you correctly there is a camp that that operates that allows children to really be children to be treated well and to be loved yeah. And just a hundred percent. So, regardless of the situation they come from, regardless if they're in even if they're in a stable home right now, or or if they're not in a stable home, this is an opportunity for them to for for five days to just to be loved and cared for, and just to be a kid. That is that's that's you know it's funny. I remember doing these interviews with you before actually going to camp, and I I've been a counselor now. For, we've we've had two camps now, and I've been. For, for both of them, I've been there. And uh, it's been an amazing experience just to see children come off a bus and to be scared. But as the, the week goes by, you see their guard come down. I mean, like even some of the toughest kids, their guards come down. And for them to really accept love, that is such a... It's crazy because I think we take that for granted at times when we see kids like, you know, with well-meaning families and stuff. And these children are coming from a background where they they're scared to love, to allow love into their lives. And so it's it's heartbreaking to see that. And this uh, it's a week for them to truly, like you said, to treat them like royalty. It's been amazing to watch them just come come in contact with that and, and, and internalize that. So I know in the past we've ran, ran into people who ask the question. It, it's a good question. Does one week really make a difference? And that's a fair question. How, how would you, what, would you, what is your response to that question? Well, the founder of Royal Family Kids, um, Royal Family Kids has been around since 1985, and the founder likes to say it took a moment for abuse to affect a child for the rest of their lives. So how can we limit what God can do with a million moments at camp? Um, but then personally, after having served at camp, one thing that comes to mind is, we'll call her Lainey. Um, 
on when the kids all get off the bus, when the bus arrives at the campground, the volunteers are already there, and they go crazy acting super excited that the, that the kids have arrived. So the volunteers are waving welcome signs and signs with the kids' names on them. And um, as each camper gets off the bus, I pull, a step, pull them aside and ask them, do you want a loud welcome or a quiet welcome? And they've seen other you know, kids get off first, and some of them will say quiet, and so then we do just go like this, like lining the sides of the royal, um, the red carpet as they get off, um, or just high fives. Some say really loud, and then we go crazy yelling. Um, but so each of them had their royal welcome and got off the bus. But our first year, I looked at the back of the bus, and there was still Lainey at the back of the bus. And so I told everyone, like, hold on a second. And I walked back there, and I just, I asked her, you know, do you want to come off and see your counselor? And she was too nervous, too scared to. And so I told everyone else to go away, and we got her counselor, and she came on the bus. And we just sat with her a few minutes till she felt comfortable enough. Um, this is a camper who, on her application, had PTSD on her back from whatever experiences she'd gone through. And so it's one reason for our in-depth training. We don't just come up to kids and clap them on the back or hug them. Or We're very careful about the ways we touch and interact with them. Um, but just to see her throughout the week. So the campers get there about lunchtime on Monday. And with, within the first 24 hours, she was smiling. She was having fun. She's got a very sweet, shy smile. but just And she's very quiet. But just to see that spark in her eyes come out, um, and I remember Thursday night, it was our last night at camp, the, uh, we would all be going home the next day, and I went into her cabin when the counselors were actually getting there two hours at night for a break. Um, they work 22 hours a day, they get two hours to go shower because they smell. But um, So we have our extra staff assistants come in for night relief, and I walked in and I found Lainey hiding under the bed in the empty room across the hall. And so I got down on the floor and just started chatting with her and asked her what she was doing. And she said, I'm staying here. And I was like, all night? She goes, um, until next camp. And I was like, honey, camp isn't until next summer. We're all going home. This is the end of camp. And you're going to stay here all year long? And she's like, and even with the spiders and the bugs, she's like, yeah. And so we just started making her laugh and cajoling her out of it. But for someone who was so scared to get off the bus the first day and whatever experiences she had in the past, we pray that they each have a safe, loving foster home now. But just even the shifting from one home to another has, takes its toll too. And to see them able to relax and enjoy and have fun that week so much so that they don't want to go home or we've had a couple say that today was the best day of my life on a couple different days it's they soak it up these yeah. kids don't get this stuff a lot so. that's true and i man i if i can interject a little bit i know i was going to interview you but you just made me think of something yeah. i i i remember my first year i had a, a camper who that was his only year that he was going to to be there and it's interesting to me, I have a picture that he drew for me. I have it kept in my Bible right now. And as I've looked at that, as, as a couple of years have gone by now, I realized that in those few days that I had with him, we are planting seeds of hope in their life. Because no matter where he goes from here, I, I hope he knows that whatever reality he faces, whatever neglect or abuse, any any negativity that he, that he may run into with other people, I hope he remembers that there are other people out there who are different. That, that whatever life he has seen doesn't have to be the life he has to accept. That there's a possibility to get out, get out of this. Get out of this neglect and abuse and to turn it around and, and pay it forward to someone else. And that's actually with that attitude, like I think about the, the next year with the campers we have, I, I had this upcoming times, like one week I like what you said, like with the with the director or the the guy who found it says, like it, it does. It just takes a moment to scar someone, mm -hmm. but it also just takes a moment to plant that seed of hope, and and it goes on. We're 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 looking to launch more than just camp itself. Mm -hmm. um, there there are other things happening throughout the year that people can be a part of. So it's not it's not just camp. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the jumping off point. Yeah. But it's something that has been, and it's we're we're wanting to see it grow, and it is and it is growing. So we've answered, I guess, what is Royal Family Kids? Um, why it's important, just because of just what we see with children. <clears throat> and I guess, where is it going? I guess we, we, we kind of talked about what camp is and it's a launching point. There are some other things happening, right? What, what else is happening with Royal Family Kids here at Waukaya from Cowles County? Um, a lot of Royal Family Kids volunteers also partner with other organizations that are already serving the kids. Um, 
the first Friday of each month is Foster Parent Night Out at one of the local churches, and that's where parents, foster parents get to drop off the kids and just have one night off of respite. Um, and so it's been really neat to get to see some of our campers from camp because it's open to all the community, so it's not just our campers necessarily, but we get to continue to see those. A lot of them will run up and hug, like, Andrew, if you can, but, or Jess for me, um, grandma, Camp Grandma and Grandpa go, and so they'll run up to see Camp Grandma and Grandpa. That's one neat way. Um, our second the second phase of Royal Family Kids Camp that we hope to launch soon is Mentor Club. And like you said, we plant the seeds at camp. Mentor Club would give us the opportunity to water those seeds all throughout the year. Um, it's a year, school year-round program where campers are matched up with a mentor. Um, but since no adults ever allowed to be one-on-one -on -one in our system, um, we would have buddy mentors with their two mentees go do activities with, for a minimum of four hours a month. Um, but that just gives them that interaction time to continue to be a positive um, role model and influence in their lives. Uh, and then in addition, the mentors pick up their mentees for mentor club one like Saturday morning a month or so and it's a type of Sunday school youth group kind of thing with activities and crafts and music and snacks and a Bible story and stuff so we're excited about the potential launch for that it does take more volunteers though so it once. does so everything you've outlined camp the uh, the Friday nights and even the uh, the mentor club it's it's pretty obvious that there's a lot of manpower that's that's needed so if someone is watching this right now and they're thinking, man, I really want to get involved, um, how, how, could they, how could they get involved, I guess? We actually have a page, which you don't know probably, that's called Get Involved on our website. So if you go to calitzcounty.royalfamilykids.org, um, you can see About, you can see Get Involved. The Get Involved talks about these different ministries throughout the year, um, not just for Royal Family Kids, but other partner organizations. It talks about camp. It talks about launching Mentor Club. Uh, we've got a Facebook page, RFK Cowlitz. Um, and we've got a mailing list, a, a newsletter that goes out each month. So anytime we're starting to try to launch something or have different opportunities throughout the year, we partnered with um, Department of Children, Youth, and Families to um, put on a Christmas party for all kids in foster care in December. And um, there's other events like that throughout the year as well. Okay. And I know there are probably some people watching this thinking to themselves, like, man, I, I love children, but I, I don't know if I can handle being with them. There are other opportunities to help that aren't necessarily being... Uh, hands-on with the kids, mm -hmm. right? So I imagine that's probably listed on the website and stuff. So there are opportunities for all skill sets, really. I, I actually, um, I did get to go to the, the Christmas thing that, that happened just last month, because last month was Christmas at the time of this recording. Um, and that was really cool. And I got to experience I, I got to I got to be Buddy the Elf, and I was just walking around. And I got to see some of the kids from camp, and they're super excited. It touched my heart to be able to see them. And so, but there, there are opportunities there for some people to just set up, to tear down, to be costume characters, um, to prep, all that stuff. And you're even looking for media people, right? Social media, uh, photographers, videography, you know, people, we, we gotta make content like this. So, our yeah. biggest fundraiser of the year is our Royal Tea Party coming up uh, May 3rd, and we need people to be costume characters for that. If you can make, bake, or buy food, um, all the food that we have at the event is all donated. Um, silent auction items. There's, again, set up and tear down tables and chairs and uh, volunteers just to help run the event. Okay. So, Jess, you, I guess one last thing I was thinking about is that you do go from church to church to, to kind of spread the ministry to kind of recruit and just to educate people and inform people about this amazing opportunity to to love children. If there's someone watching uh, who would like for you to come and, and speak at their church, I'm assuming in Cowlitz County, okay. Wakayakum, not like L.A. or something. But if, if there's someone who's watching this who would like for you to come, is there a way they can connect with you to maybe request you and, 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 and you come and just share your heart and what's happening? I will go wherever anyone will let us talk about it. Um, on the website and on the Facebook page, all the phone numbers and emails all come to me. So they can visit either callitzcounty.royalfamilykids.org or Facebook at RFK Callitz. And um, if your workplace um, at a staff meeting has an opportunity to share, a couple places have allowed me to do that. Oh, that's cool. Or like the Rotary Club or the Elks or the Lions or the Llamas or whatever, any kind of organization that, allow, that is invested in... Um, the community and outreach. Yeah, that's awesome. So Jess, those are all the things that I had on my mind, but is there anything else that you'd like to share with anyone before we, we cut the camera? 
Um, I just think the opportunity for impact is so huge. Uh, we've seen some really sad statistics of where some of the kids in care sometimes end up. Um, I, one of them that stands out to me the most is that 80% of the inmates on death row were once in foster care. And there's some others that are heartbreaking as well, but just we have the opportunity to not only affect these kids' lives, but the lives of those that they would have affected also on the way to um, where they might have ended up. So the opportunity for the impact for the entire community is huge. So. That's awesome. Well, Jess, thank you so much for your time and thank, thank you. you for sitting down with me.